Alright, I think I'm back. Think I'm back. Like thirty, I think. Thirty viewers. Alright, trying again. Alright. Same thing. Uh, I'm probably going to end up saying a lot of the same stuff. Hopefully my internet doesn't drop. I was explaining before, my internet's like a bit shaky right now because like I just moved back to school. And the first week of school, everyone's like registering for IP addresses. And when you, like that's happening and they're hammering on like the school's IP addresses, like uh, my friend tried to explain to me. I don't really know the whole of it, but basically, basically, it like it makes you drop like every little so often. Um, it's not that big of a deal, but it kind of sucks a little bit. So, um, here we go again. Same matchup: Kelt versus Persia. Kelt finds his hunt right away, way in the back, which is good. And Persia finds his hunt right away as well, just off to the side. So, um, one of the things I was saying just before this dropped is um, the importance of having of Persia having a hunt that's fairly defendable. And this is in a pretty defendable location. Um, this is probably almost in TC range. TC range probably stretches to about right here. Um, so that's just about in TC range. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about early pressure. Um, you can see the mist has found two hunts, both behind his base. He's going to build on both of them right away. He's got one storehouse here. So he kind of does like this three on food, three on wood, and then goes and does two more on food um, right off the bat. And Soldier has gone four on food, and now he's got four on wood as well. And I would look for Soldier to go with a early age up, probably a 12 pop age up. That's kind of like the norm in this matchup is to go 12, 12 pop archer, maybe 13 pop archer if your hunt's not good, and then to rush archery range. Um, that's kind of like the standard build, and I would expect him, especially being he hasn't dropped a barracks, um, to do that. Dropping barracks in this matchup is um, not very good. Um, refresh, guys. It should be up. I think it's back up. It should be back up. If you refresh, let me know if it's not. Like someone messaged me, tell me if it's not. Should be back up. Um, soldier building on his gold, and he did a 13 pop Egypt, so. I am a big fan of doing the 12 pop age up just because it gets you that first archer a little bit quicker and like cuts down the possibility of that first longsword being effective in its raid. Um, but he went 13 pop, slightly more economical. He'll have a few more resources in transition. But um, yeah, it should be up, Bart, if you refresh. Hopefully. Refresh. It's up. I'm going to turn down my game zones a little bit, just because they seem pretty loud to me. And so there's the archery range that we were talking about that was going to come right away, and that comes as soon as he gets aged up. Um, and you can see the Mista started barracks as well. And so pretty much the what the Mista is scouting for is he's scouting to make sure this isn't barracks. If this is a barracks, his response is to go barracks, barracks. And if this is an archery range, his response is to go barracks archery range. And soldier wants to scout, and if he scouts barracks barracks, then he wants to go archery range archery range. And if he doesn't scout that, if he scouts barracks archery range, then he goes archery range stable. Um, hopefully you got all that. That's pretty much um, almost how it's always going to play out. It's almost always going to be... Um, it's almost always going to be barracks, archery range, archery range, and then it's going to be some variation of uh, archery range, stable, and then barracks, depending on 
um, when he how economically he wants to play. He's played pretty economically here, you can tell, because he's gotten both of the upgrades. Um, he's gotten that first wood chopping upgrade, which means that um, his third military building, so uh, importantly his barracks, is going to be slightly later than it would be if he held off on that. Um, you can see the Mista has cut the gold upgrade, and as a re result, has pretty much gotten this extra military building up slightly faster. And so that's like the little nuances of the build that really um, that can really be, be the decision making, especially in like a close high level game like this. Um, I would say right now this sort of favors the Mista because he did cut on this pickaxe upgrade which is going to result in him having more units and here comes this little timing push I was talking about earlier um, this timing push is going to come with about his first like 12-ish units so let's see what he's got he's got six spear seven spear like maybe three slingers so he's got about nine ten units and he's going to look to push this now Celts are really really strong in small number unit fights um, the reason they're really small is because their composition early is really strong slingers are really really strong especially Celt slingers are really really strong if you can micro them effectively onto the bowman and when you can micro them effectively onto the bowman um, you get a lot of really like your your overall DPS is really really high now it's when they get into big fights and they're forced you know fight with like kind of their awkward mechanics that they tend to be a little bit weaker so um, you can see soldier trying to cut off some of the reinforcements here the mystic kind of back in his base he's maybe going to try and get a surround but I think he realizes he's pretty weak here he wants to kind of get back grouped up the mist has got a lot of units um, realize he's pumping out of three military buildings soldier up to this point is only pumping out of two he's got the barracks coming right now remember he he opted to go with the mining upgrade um, early which kind of resulted in this delayed barracks which th this is the scary timing this is the timing where a lot of times Celts can just straight up win this matchup and um, we'll have to see how Soldier deals with it. Um, he's going to notice how he's drawing them all the way back into the base. So he's got TC fire, really good reinforcements, and how his reinforcements can get around in the back. Um, even then, it's looking like it's not really going to matter. Um, the Mist has got so many units. He's got nine slingers and seven spearmen still alive in there. Um, and that's the strength of this little timing push. And I, I won't say it's completely at fault of that, um, of that gold mining upgrade, but it's to an extent a part um, of that gold mining upgrade. And um, I, I, I don't know. I, I've played this matchup quite a few times against Vic as well. Um, and I've played this matchup from the Celt side a few times against Sam's Persia, and it's this timing push is really scary from Celt. It's really hard to push. Um, with Greek, Soldier says he wants to go again. We'll do one more of these. Um, with Greek, it's slightly easier. Well, with Greek, it's quite easy because you can make anti-infantry out of your barracks, which means you can make barracks archery range and kind of have, like, the whole three units that you need to defend against Celts. Whereas... With Persia, you need, like, kind of all three. Like, you need the Spar Bar to tank. You need, like, that, that tank line. And you don't have, like, the Axeman Hippospis type unit that can be in front killing the Spearmen and tanking. Um, so until you get, like, good numbers of both of those, it's slightly awkward. Um, it's slightly awkward with Persia against Celts. So we're going to go again, same matchup. Let's see what Soldier does to change, if he does anything to adapt. Um, what he, what I think he can do to kind of cut down on, on, on that timing push, the scariness of that timing push, is um, he really needs to cut the gold upgrade. Let's see if he goes with that again. Um, no, that's fine. I know Mist is good. He's really good. Uh, like, I have no shame in admitting he's... He's the best player. Like, he's very good. He's he's strong. He understands the game really well. His mechanics are very fluid, very solid. Um, so here we go, second game. Um, 
let's see how Soldier decides to decides to play it. Notice uh, one key difference from this game as the last game. The gold mine is completely behind his town center, so there's not going to be um, the last game, if you recall, there was the gold mine was kind of off here, and the Mista kind of did a little side poke while he was getting his reinforcements cut off, and that was all well and good um, in the big fight. But in that little like push, um, he was kind of pushed off gold, and it probably made his transitions a little awkward. Um, ooh, I hope that fill don't run all the way back. That's gonna be ooh, that's not good. Um, she loses quite a bit of gathering time there. That's like maybe 10, 10, 15 seconds of villager run time, which isn't good. But um, you can see he's got one hunt behind. Let's see if he finds his other hunt. I would almost always try and scout like the back regions of your base first because having hunts in the back side of your um, base is really, really strong. You see the Mistas. Um, first hunt is right here. And his second hunt is out here. So... Um, soldier's got a second back hunt as well, so his hunts are, they're far, but at least they're behind his base. Realize at least, um, being out behind his base, yeah, they're far away, but, I mean, it's extra distance that the Celt player has to travel as well, so. It makes the timing pushes in the early game slightly less scary, and that's, that's the scariest time. So Soldier's gonna open barracks here. Um, I don't know how familiar he is with the matchup, but this is... This is almost a death wish. Um, when the Mista spots this, this is going to be... He's going to be happy. He's going to be really happy when he sees this. Um, I think Soldier th knows that he needs Sparabara in his mix, and he knows he needs them early, but the way that he's going about getting them is um, less than ideal. Um, so basically, what's going to happen here if I can explain this um, in a simple way, is he's going to scout this, and he's going to go... He's either going to go double racks archer range, or he'll go racks range racks, would be my guess, just to deal with the spar bar. And then once he gets out a whole bunch of long swords, then it becomes like a really double hard counter like with a full melee comp and there's just not going to be enough archers to really deal with the large amounts of infantry that there's going to be. Um, one thing that's important to realize about dis deciding what you're going to build as your first m your first military building is this extra time that you have when, like, for example, he's got a barracks here that's his only military building, he's training units constantly out of it, so even if he's got one, 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 one of each military building, he's still going to have, by default, m more um, spar bar, just because he's had a long, long time training them. Um, you're going to see this first, um, first longsword isn't going to really be that... Um, that far off, so I mean, it, I mean, the pressure is going to be non-existent. If anything, he might be in danger of losing his Sparabara. Um, and here's an archery range, and I wouldn't be surprised to see um, another barracks as his next military building. You can see soldiers got the archery range. He's decided to cut. I don't know if he's decided or if he's still going to get this, but for the time being, he has cut pickaxe, which is um, really important because I, I mean that's that's how that's how you're going to win. Um, no, and he's going to get it again. So I think that's the second time he's made kind of the same mistake. Like this pickaxe. Notice, notice he's got a hundred wood here. If he didn't have that pickaxe, he could be dropping another military building, or almost be dropping another military building. He could like uncue this archer and uncue this, and that's basically his stable is building at the same time. You can see the mist has got another barracks coming, so he's going to have barracks range barracks. Kind of the second um, decision that I said he would have. Basically, it's going to be two barracks as an archery range. Um, and and as a result, once again, he's going to have three military buildings to two military buildings. Now, if, if you uncued that, uh, and he's going to use aid tent as well, which is a little less of a waste of wood because it gives you some utility in the fight. You can also see he's trying to build his his base better, but his, his units are still going to be... Um, 
it's still going to be late. So here's a second archery range, which isn't a terrible decision, but it's just it's just not going to it's going to be too late because notice now the production here is already coming out full throttle for the Mista. He's got quite a few units on the table. He's got seven long swords, two slingers, and yeah, now soldiers' economy is slightly better, but I mean how is he going to hold this? Now he's got a lot of Sparabara versus a lot of Longswords, and that just kind of happened because of which building they each made first. Um, so here comes the same, like, really scary timing push. Um, it's it's the same it's the same kind of thing. He's denied one archer range. He's going to push him off another one. He's probably either going to stop that or just, you know, stop his economy pretty hard. He's microing well. Slingers do really well in good n low numbers of fights. And here's the scary timing push. You can see Soldier's got the aid tent, which is really helping um, his units a lot. And he's got this pretty good like little concave going, but it's just still, it's really not enough. Um, he really needs all three units mixed in here. And this, once again, just isn't the way to go about it. Um, a slight mistake once again. Notice his third military building still didn't even get up. Um, the timing push came with a lot of long swords and a lot of slingers, and that's that's game again. Um, so yeah, um, that's game again. Um, what he really needs to do is he needs to he needs to cut on on that wood upgrade that wood upgrade. Let's see if the Mista has the wood upgrade yet. See, notice how he still doesn't even have the wood upgrade, and it's not really that important. I mean, yeah, he's got like six he's got six villagers, um, but it, it, the biggest importance is the lack of the of this upgrade and the third military building and how fast that's coming up for the Mista, whereas soldiers producing out of two military buildings almost the entire game, and he's just falling behind on military. Um, he says going to get a different sieve. Maybe we can get another game. Um, but I, actually, I hope he watches that and kind of sees those timings to see how that ends up working out. Um, because that's 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 a pretty important like that's pretty important in that matchup you need to get all three and if you can get all three and you can hold and you can get into big population fights that's when Persia starts to have an advantage um, and it's not until they get in big populations with all three unit types that Persia really has an advantage so that's kind of how you want to play Celts in general is pretty aggressively use the strength of your sieve um, early game and um, and try and, and try and have some trades. What should soldier do? Soldier should go 12 age up, drop an archery range, and drop a stable, and drop a barracks, and not get the gold upgrade. Um, is kind of what he needs to do. He needs to get all three unit types out, and he needs to um, he needs to n not be so eco heavy at the start, and he needs to kind of like play like the I'm not going to die to a timing push build instead of eco heavy. Yep. So he's talking about train time and stuff. Um that's not super important. The train times are pretty even. It's just the fa it's kind of just the the fact that he's not getting that gold upgrade. Um and I think soldier will figure that out eventually if he plays that matchup enough times. But, um... Rack stable archery doesn't actually work at all. You lose to the same timing push. He just goes, um... He just goes double racks and you just lose. Same timing push. You don't ever get the archery range up. It's actually even worse. You need, you need archer cav and you need to sit in your base and be really defensive. It's actually hard. It's it's hard to defend that timing push. Like you need the correct resource set up, and you need to get somewhat lucky. Oh, against against a correctly played Celt. I mean, I'm talking like like the super high level, like the where where timing pushes are actually somewhat of a factor. What's my favorite team? As in, what's my favorite sieve? 
Is that what you're asking? If, that, if that's what you're asking, my favorite sieve... My favorite sieve is probably... Persia to play. My f favorite sieve is probably Persian. Um, my best sieve is probably Greek, but they're also really, really OP right now, so that's probably like everybody's best sieve. Um, I haven't played Celts that much. They're probably my weakest sieve. I haven't played much Babylon either. Um, Egypt, I'm pretty fond of. They're a lot of fun. But, anyways, um, to this game. This game is, once again, we're on equal footing. Pretty much the only map that we play on, because it's the only map that's somewhat balanced. Um, sheltered can be okay, but your gold mine can be really far away, which kind of sucks. Um, um, then the other map is, like, pretty, pretty bad, like, pretty screwy. Um, so Soldier playing Egypt now. Lemista is still playing Celts. He's doing the same style of play. Um, he's doing the two opening on in two different hunt locations. Um, he's got a total of six villagers this time. That might be a slight mistake. Um, it could be on purpose, I'm not sure. I don't think he would need five. Um, What sieves best on water? Probably Greek. Just because they're the best on land, too. Rack stable archery does not work against against Celts. Not barracks archery. It's it, it doesn't work. You'll you'll lose to double barracks timing push. I mean, you do you do want those three buildings, but you don't want them in that order. You want archer stable racks. And going in the going in another order is semi suicidal. You really need to open archers against um, in this matchup, anyways. With Greeks, you can definitely do that. That's a perfectly viable build. Um, so we can see the Mista, double barracks here. He's done the same, pretty much the same opening. He's gone double barracks, soldier's gone, um, early spearman, um, he's got his barracks up, and that spearman's really not going to do anything. This first longsword's going to be out with plenty of time to control that, um, it's going to be pretty much a non-threat. He may have to move this villager, he'll waste maybe five seconds, um, of gather time, but at the end of the day... Three, four, five. Notice how he swaps it back out. Notice he wants to maintain the same spread um, with his units. He wants to have the same population split, but he doesn't want to expose that low HP villager. So he puts that villager on the um, puts that villager back on the wood line and sends one with full HP back out. Um, Egypt players doing kind of pretty standard. Um, he's got double barracks. He's once again going with the double opening, um, getting both of the storehouse techs. That's still a mistake, even with this um, sieve. You just really don't need it on one villager. It's just not that important um, early in the game. It's far more important to get early military production buildings, and this is going to be the same thing. Um, Soldier's going to fall into that same trap again. Notice how he's... His macros, eh, it's not great, but it's not terrible either. Um, yet at the same time, he's just going to kind of, like, lose to timing push again for the same reason. Um, he's he's just not got enough buildings up. You can see the Mista's third building is just finishing when Soldier's is just starting. So, I mean, he's going to have... It's, it's a small window, and notice when I'm talking about these windows, they're pretty small windows. They're probably, oh, maybe a minute or two long only that you have to hit these windows. And so, unless you're macroing efficiently, and you're playing really well otherwise, these timing windows are 
harder and harder to hit. Um, you can still kind of hit like kind of the same timings, but they're probably going to be a little later and they're going to be probably not quite as crisp. Um, hopefully, ooh, that could be really bad. Notice, look at the army difference. Um, Soldier lost some units early, but the Mista is up on 8 pop and he's got stronger units, so um, it's going to be once again pretty hard for him to hold this timing push. Um, and I don't want to say it's completely due to that that gold gathering upgrade, but a large part of it is because of that gold gathering upgrade. Um, I wouldn't say he's really losing based on skill, he's losing based on lack of knowledge of the of the matchup, and he's, he's just not playing against the Civ, right? Celts really aren't that strong in the mid and late game. Um, their strength is in the early game and early trades, and that, once again, um, just didn't work out for him, because he didn't have the military buildings. I mean, he just got this one up just now, um, whereas the Mist has been pumping on three continuously pretty much the entire time. So, um, that's the end of that game. And... That's that. Let me give one more shot at a real game, he says. Alright. Is there any Civ that can match the Celt Rush? Match in what sense? The DPS-wise and movement speed-wise, Celts units are pretty much pretty much the best there are. Um, Celts weaknesses are in their compositional issues. Um, so they kind of they, they can they can lose late game to um, yeah Celts have one more speed on all of their units which is pretty big. Um, they've got the most cost effective Long long swords have seven speed. Uh, axemen, yeah, axemen are seven now as well. Um, but their slingers have one more speed, I believe, than than other archer units, um, which is pretty pretty big. Um, all of their infantry can't be snared, so they're good at little fights. They're really good with positioning in little fights. Um, what else? Slingers just have good DPS. Uh, their slingers are slingers are really strong units, just in general early game. But when you get into bigger compositions, they're they tend to be quite a bit weaker. Um, but yeah, Celts can't like their overall rush really doesn't have an equal to it. But when you can hold it and you can hold the timing push, your eco can potentially be stronger and um, yeah, your eco is potentially quite a bit stronger because they like forgo some stuff early game. And um, and then your composition is almost always going to be strong with almost any sieve. Between 4.30 and 7? Um, no, Greeks still are. Um, but Celts are good. Celts are... Their, their, their early game is strong. It's definitely their their strength. And the longer they can keep like fighting in little fights and trading units effectively early game, um, the better off they are. You want to avoid big pop battles with Celts, yeah, that's right. Um, especially against civs with proper cav units, Persia and Greek, um, and civs with hippospists. So like um, Celts, uh, well, not Celts, because that would be the mirror. Um, uh, Egypt and Greek, I guess. Babylon, to an extent. Babylon's just kind of bad right now. Um, 
Greeks don't have a stronger early game, but they just don't have any holes in their early game. Like they have really strong composition from from two military buildings, which is a big plus. Um, that's kind of Persia's weakness is they don't have they don't have Hippospis, so they can't get all three unit types out of. Well, now I don't want to say unit types because like Greek can't either. What what Persia lacks out of like they they lack like an effective like anti infantry like a tanky unit like a tanky unit that doesn't die to spears. <laughs> I it's, you just need all all like uh, an anti infantry unit that's not gonna die, whereas like archers just die really easily. Egypt has less of a problem because their anti-infantry units like so cheap and spammy. Mister should be five on hunt. Yep, that should be right. Usually builds three on one and two on another. He's gone three and three this game again. My guess, m my intuition here is, um, usually he does three and two. But my guess is because these hunts are so far away, like they have been the last two games, he's probably sent an extra villager over to compensate um, for that extra run time at the, s at the starts um, so that he can still hit that 15 age up timing. He wants to hit the 15 age up timing. You can see how he's kind of held here on 15 pop. He's got queued up to 15. And what that does is it makes his barracks just ever so slightly slower, but it ensures that he still gets up um, right at 15. So you'll see that barracks will start right when he gets 200, and then he should hit the 15 age up timing um, pretty easily. Yeah, he's going to make it by quite a bit, so. Yeah, I, my guess would be normally it's 5, but on maps where he's got a long run distance on the hunts, he probably sends 6. Who do I think will win? Probably the Mista. <laughs> That's just an honest answer. Like, no flame to soldier, he's a good player, but... Um, no hunting dogs, that's pretty standard. I think this is a little greedy from Soldier. I think he wanted to try and reach that to the, um... I think he wanted to try and reach that slightly to the berries, but then he ended up giving up a little extra room here on this gold mine. Ideally, you want, like... The store has to be like right here, so it's a like pretty. It's a very small gap. You can still run a single line of villagers there. Yeah, see how here he's got his storehouse. It's like you've got this the single line of villagers can fit through there. Um, whereas you can see soldiers, he's got that little extra runtime. That little extra runtime may not seem like a lot, but every time that villager goes back and forth, it's probably like half a second, and half a second hundreds of times adds up to maybe a hundred resources by the end of the game, so. Um, every little advantage like that um, is something that you should try and take advantage of if you can. Soldier, once again, on two racks. The Mista on one racks, one range. Nope, double racks, one range. Excuse me. And did Soldier cut? Yeah, there he finally did it. He cut he cut the pickaxe so that's big this time he's cut the pickaxe and notice as a result his third military building is coming up and it's still slightly slower that's probably just like m macro issues um, or maybe that's just the civ play style I'm not quite sure but um, notice how third military building just finishing and instead of just starting hey his military buildings almost done as well and that kinda comes just from delaying the pickaxe a little bit. You can see he's getting it now. I still doubt that Mista has got it. Yep, it looks like he's gotten it as well. Looks like um, he's just finished it as well. But notice how this time um, the third military building is already up for Soldier, whereas previously um, it had not been up. So kudos to him for picking up on that and Fixing, fixing some errors in his build. And that should, as a result, make this easier to hold. Um, 
Notice how fast uh, Axeman train, if he's going to start training them, he needs to be training them. Um, Axeman train very, very fast, and so um, his reinforcement time is going to be very good inside of his base. He should probably have this Priestess healing these units just to make them slightly more efficient, but with Town Center Fire, um, good unit reinforcement time, he's more or less held um, with very little problems, so... Um, it's the same likes little six minute timing push that he's going to try and keep um, the pressure up and once you know once the units get into bigger unit count sizes um, then that timing push starts to become a little less effective and then it goes comes down to um, more reading and tactical moves while well, macroing and you know getting some stone and upgrades and potentially looking to age and stuff like that that wins you the game then just um, knowing the builder so we're kind of like past the stage where you can build order win I mean that's a term that's thrown around in Starcraft a lot I know is build order winning um, and I would say like what we just saw in these like last two games is like the closest thing this game has to build order win Are the Mista and I 50-50 when we play? Um, no, we're not. Um, we're probably 75-25 or 80-20. He wins in the advantage. Um, you can see a little bit of a raid back here. Um, ooh, Soldier pushing out of space. His base, I don't really like this. Ooh, he might get lucky. And I don't know if the Mista's seen. Um, he got in a pretty good position there because the Mista didn't see. He's going to get a good surround. He's also got unit reinforcements coming in. Um, this is going to be a really, really good fight for him. You can see the, the Mista's supply is just plummeting where Soldier's just holding more or less pretty steady. Um, he did get a little bit of a raid back here, and he's getting even more of a little raid back here, um, which has cost Soldier... Um, some slight villager production notice he's down five or six villagers um, but also at the same time he did hold the push fairly effectively and now he's got a a fairly scary army himself um, that he can kind of counter push with so here we've got um, oh I don't know 12 units compared to 25, 20, 25 units probably coming here, maybe closer to 30 at this point. Um, it's nothing that he can really immediately use to his advantage. I mean, it's not something that he can just dive right in on, but now he can use this kind of like this unit pool that he has and the advantage of the unit pool that he has to um, try and do some counter pressure and to try and split up if he so chooses. Otherwise, he might just go back to his base and try and macro up a little bit. Um, he should definitely get picker gloves because he's gathering quite a few berries by the looks of it. Um, he's done a pretty good job of building his base here. Notice he's got um, kind of this like little L-shaped wall here. That's going to pretty much cut off um, the front side of his base from the back side of his base. He's got lots of resources in the back um, side of his base, which is um, boating well for him. So. This game is looking like it's probably going to last a little bit longer. It's going to go more into a later game style of game um, with both players going to kind of go back to their base and, and do a little camping. So now that we're into like the second phase of the game, this is, this, this is where the game can get uh, a little boring and a little dull at times because now is when it's really hard... It's really hard to push and kill your opponent. Um, it's really hard to even push and have a good fight, a favorable fight, especially when, I mean, the scores are so close. And misses down a little bit in the score, um, but not much. I mean, two, three hundred points, which at the end of the day is, I mean, really not not that much. I mean, it's ten pop down, which against Egypt is pretty much nothing. Um, soldier getting a little bit of map control, going to get a couple house kills, got a villager kill, he might get another one. Um, he needs to retreat though, he probably doesn't want to fight this. He's got some priestesses in the front line, if he can get an okay position he might be okay. He's got lots of reinforcements streaming in from the back. Um, Mista needs to focus down these priestesses and kill them moderately early if he can, notice there they go um, right now. 
There's one. Uh, the second one goes down. Soldier losing a lot of units out front. And he needs to retreat with as much as he can get out of there. And notice how that was a pretty big pop swing. Um, Soldier went from being 10 up to almost 20 down, so... Um, the, that's that's why you don't really want to you don't want to just push and do straight engages like that. Um, as dull as it may seem, his best his best play there would have been to get armory, maybe another TC. Um, he's got lots of resources, so he doesn't need to really make like a, a a pull out of his base. I mean, look how much resource he has. He doesn't really need to come out of his base really at all for quite a while. Um, he could have just kind of like sat in his base a little bit, gotten some techs, aged up, gotten a TC, done a lot of different little things, um, and then like tried to maybe get some elephant play or some raids, and then and then try and end it. But um, just trying to go for a straight engage like that um, is not good. Now you can see the mystic going about um, doing what I was just describing. Um, a little more effectively, kind of doing what soldiers should have done. This is when you have a, a unit advantage, this is the kind of game style you should kind of go to. Um, the more you can make villagers run, look how many villagers, you just made, what, nine villagers? Completely move off wood there. So, I mean, when they're not gathering and they're running across the map, that's just time where your villagers back at home are just gathering completely peacefully. So, um, when you get an advantage, you want to build the advantage, you don't really want to you don't want to waste the advantage. Um, one thing I'm noticing about Soldier's play here is he's doing a lot of carding. Like, you notice how he's he's carding here and he's not building house. Um, he's carding here and he's been carding here the entire game because of that, like, one greedy storehouse. Um, he's got a little bit of carding here. Um, I think this storehouse is mostly for the gold. He still doesn't have picker's gloves, which he's been eating through a lot of berries with no picker's gloves, and now he's transitioning into farms. Um, which is okay, but it's also kind of like... I don't know, it's it's defensive. It's kind of like a play to survive for the next little bit than a play to win. Um, Mista getting a really good positioning here. He's got his whole tank line like way out front while his slingers are pretty much untouched in the back. Um, he's going to win big in the exchange probably, but he's not going to be able to push in and win just because of how fast Egypt reinforces and Egypt's got reinforcements right in his base. Um, Egypt's also got the first upgrade from the armory. Don't know that... Um, the mist has got an armory at all. Opting instead for a second TC. And you can see now he's kind of got the map control that he can kind of do a little bit more of whatever he wants. He's kind of got... Um, he's got a little bit of a chokehold on the Egypt player. He's... I mean, he's really confined to his base. It's going to be hard for him to... It's going to. It's still going to be hard for him to win, but um, he can build this advantage more and more and more. Um, try and get villager kills, try and kill some of the army, do some trades, try and age up, um, and then get to a point where, you know, if you can build an eco advantage and be at 180 pop and then push, your odds of winning are going to be a lot better than, you know, if you're just at a flat one, like 120 pop just trying to ram down his throat, so. 49 villagers to 52. Soldier actually getting that TC up and making advantage of it. Um, got that early second TC and he's been, looks by the looks of it, been streaming constant villagers out of it. So that's really good for him. Um, he's caught back up nicely in villagers and even past the mist in villagers. He's slightly behind in economy, but... Um, or he's slightly behind in uh, unit count, rather. Excuse me. Um, but that's not too big of an issue at this point in the game. The Mista has aged up. He's got Woad Raiders. Soldier has not aged up yet. Notice he's got a lot of gold. Um, the rest of his resource value is sitting pretty low. But I would look to see him... Um, he should be aging up. And there he is actually aging up. So um, the game's going to transition more into a mid-game... And late game scenario now, 
Um, and this is often what happens. Um, most of the time in this game, in Age of Empires Online, you see like one of two scenarios. Either someone wins with an early timing push, or the game progresses into a point where no one can really push out. And you can see the Mista making a really bold play here. He's got a fort coming up right on um, Soldier's front door. Um, and if that fort gets up, that's going to be really hard for Soldier to deal with. Notice how all of his production facilities, a lot of houses, um, his TC, everything even, is just going to be kind of pinned down by that fort. That's going to be really, really tough for him to deal with. It's pretty much going to, you know, cut the map into maybe a, a 5 to 1 ratio with the Mista having, you know, f five, 5 parts of the map for soldiers, one part of the map. So, um, that fort's going to go up uncontested even, and that's going to be really, really tough to deal with. Um, villager counts are even. The Mista's slightly ahead in military. I think Soldier needs to get some elephants out here. That's that's really the only weakness that um, Celts have is big tanky cav units, and he's going to even try and get another fort up. Wow, that's a really bold. Um, but it looks like he just can't afford to do it because um, Soldier just doesn't want to fight. Now that that first fort is up, he really can't fight. Um, now you can see uh, this infantry and the ram and everything kind of just standing guard here. This is going to be <laughs> this is going to be really hard. I don't know. I I don't even know what soldier can do in his position. I mean, he's got a lot of resources. It looks like he might be trying to age and like get some catapults out, um, but he just doesn't have the stone to do that right yet. He's sitting on a big stack of resources. Notice he's also pop capped because um, he's been losing some houses. Um, building another TC, so it looks like he's not going to age up. He's pop-capped, but he knows that if he fights, especially if he just does a straight fight, um, <laughs> he's just going to get decimated by these forts, and he's just getting pinned back into his base really, really hard now. Um, he should have never tried to let this... He, he really needed to try and stop this from getting up, because now that these forts are up... Um, He's got he's got nowhere to go. He's going to be out of gold if he's not out of gold already um, very soon. Um, he's got a lot of slingers, but they're I mean they're really not an efficient unit. They're definitely not pop efficient. They're nowhere near the strength of like Wode Raiders pop efficiency wise. Um, you can see this big kind of like raiding force. I wouldn't be surprised to see this come and bust down the fort on the side. Um, when when the mist tries to poke in here the next time you can see yep here it goes this little raid over here is going to kind of sneak around here and try and bash the side of his um wall his building wall in while he's like pushing in here um and this is just what the mista does really well um he splits his units well he harasses well um but he's not ever overextended or doesn't ever lose his units unnecessarily. Um, he makes bold plays, yet at the same time um, they're calculated plays. They're never like too over the edge. So um, here you can see he's going to get right into his eco. He's going to do a lot of damage to his villagers. Soldier falling behind the villagers now losing some more. Lost his fort. He's going to lose his market. Um, and yeah, Soldier's going to clean this up, but losing a fort in his market while his whole economy is being harassed by Slingers on the other side is definitely not a good thing. Um, just rams everywhere from the Misties, making them constantly out of these forts, and they're just um, wrecking Soldier's, um, wrecking his, his structure line. And you can see the Mist losing a lot of pop, but... His economy is pretty strong with 84 villagers um, that he's really not going to have any trouble whatsoever um, replacing that army and getting an even stronger army. So, soldier still sitting on a huge stack of resources, um, but just unable to do anything with them. What he really needs is he needs that market back up. His only real chance right now is to get a market up really quick. Um, 
sell some of these resources, get to age four as soon as possible, and and pump out some siege units. Try and push back this big wall of forts. That's really his only play right now. Um, he, I mean, he's still just making slingers, which aren't really going to do anything at this point. I mean, these things have, like, what, 80% range resist or something? Yeah, 70% range resist, um, which just isn't going to really do that much, especially when you have other raids, like, coming in through here. Um, the, the lack of the mobility of the slingers just isn't going to cut it. Um, even though the Mista is, you know, down 30 on pop, I would go ahead and say this game is pretty much completely over, just because, um... Soldier is completely pinned into his base. Um, he's just, he's never going to get out of his base. There's just no way that he's ever going to break this line unless he can magically somehow age up, but I don't see that ever happening. See back here, Soldier's got a little bit of a raid coming back on, um, back on his home, uh, which is good. I mean, that's... One of the best ways to deal with pressure is to apply pressure yourself, but um, a, a 10 unit raid on a couple of villagers probably isn't going to cut it, especially when his eco is spread out so much and um, it's just all over the map. <laughs> Half of his economy is like in the middle of the map, so I mean, it's not like he's, I don't think he's too afraid of losing a couple of villagers back home. Soldier, you can see, getting some elephants out. Um, he's looking to deal with the forts that way. Um, which, I mean, elephants do do really well against Celts, but fighting underneath enemy forts right outside your base is pretty damn annoying. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what to say at this point. I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's like I don't know if the mist just doesn't want to end it, or I, he's going to age four. He could have, you know, probably just ended at any point here by just like massing up load raiders, but um, he hasn't done that yet. He's continued to just troll around with rams and forts and such. Um, Yeah, soldier hanging out for one last hope, I guess. I mean, if he can get a high enough elephant count, and if the Mista continues to lack augers in his in his composition, I mean, that's like his his one potential like saving grace. But <laughs> there's so many forts like right outside his base. That there's nothing he can do about that. And there's the GG, the official resign GG. Ultimate map control is correct. Yeah, soldiers ahead in score, but he's ahead in score because he's got 8,000 unspent wood. Um, I really do think that, I mean, soldiers' economy was very strong there for a while. Um, it still is, even at the end. He's got 74 villagers. If he could have broke this contain in some way, I mean, he's got fort. He had he has a fort up. He had two forts up. He had one over here. He could have somehow broken the contain by getting to age four, and getting if he could have if he could have um, if he could have broke the contain with some siege, um, he maybe could have made a play to get himself back in the game with some elephants, but. Um, Yeah, it's pretty damn tough. <laughs> pretty damn tough when you're pinned in by by like four forts, five forts, and have no map. So, <sighs> strange game, but um. Really, kind of what it comes back to, what lost him that map control, 
was that one big fight right over here where he, he was up 10 pop and then he was behind 30 pop. He had like a, a 40 pop swing with one fight right here and lost map control and never took it back. Um, he really needed to not have that happen. He m maybe would have had a chance, but um, maybe could have done something similar um, for himself, but the only real way to break forts is <laughs> is to get siege, to get range siege. No, his ma he didn't get out macroed. Um, Soldier's macro was actually pr pretty good. He was actually ahead. He just um, it, he lost that one fight and lost all sense of map control. He got pushed into his base and couldn't ever leave. So, alright, well, that's the end of that game.